going on there folks good morning good afternoon it is the earth master back here in the office on this kind of feels like a monday morning but it uh, is in fact wednesday july 5th 2023 it's about 12 25 p.m here back on the home front in california latest quake activity shows a somewhat moderate earthquake activity around the java trench with a 5.1 coming in just a short time ago the latest quake though shows a 1.4 into the alaska area that is the latest quake up there. California been showing a little bit of movement here in the southern part of the state, specifically down here south of the Salton Sea area, just off the Imperial and the Brawley Seismic Zone. We've seen a, a handful of earthquakes here overnight. And this morning so far, a little bit of elevated activity on this Wednesday. The largest so far, 2.2. But either way, a little slight uptick here in earthquake activity across this region. Continue to watch that. No major swarming going on, just a... Uh, a noticeable uptick. Uh, also some activity across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Slight little clustering going on there in that region of the state. Uh, also some movement. Bay Area is pretty quiet right now. Not a whole lot going on throughout the Bay. Uh, same for the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Uh, we did have some activity up into the Chester area. Lake Almanor once again. This is that region that has seen, uh, well, quite a bit of earthquake activity. Um, following, I believe it was that five-pointer here over a month ago now. Still seeing some activity around the Lake Almanor region with a uh, total tally of, and this doesn't include the five-pointer, about 23 earthquakes uh, just in the past 30 days. Now the five-pointer has been over that 30-day mark, so we're not able to see that on that uh, on that option there. But either way, 3.5 coming in early this morning. Still seeing some activity over here along the Cascadia subduction zone. Again, um, roughly uh, at the southern end of the Cascadia. And the southern end is indeed where Northern California is. This is the Cascadia Megathrust area, the southern segment of it. It's been showing heightened activity here over the last, oh, I'd say the last couple days. Let's, sh let's bring in the map here and show you guys what we got going on. Uh, the latest one, by the way, was a, uh, looks like a 1.6. But we did see some further movement overnight uh, with a 2.8, 2.1. The largest so far looks to be a 4.0. Uh, I had a couple almost to the 4.0 level. Uh, officially reached one a couple days ago here. But either way, activity increasing here at the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault or the uh, Cascadia Subduction Zone. Excuse me, I'm working on a very minimal um, rest. I didn't go to bed until about 3.30 or so my time. Had to catch a late night flight back here to California. So uh, the Cascadia subduction zone, this is uh, yesterday's. We had a little bit here in Southern Oregon, uh, but over the past, oh, we can bring up, let's see what we got here. Let's bring up the last week of activity. It's been relatively light, but it's been confined here to the Northern California area, specifically down here and a little bit uh, southern oregon but either way this is a southern segment of the cascadia as noted here on the map notice the increasing activity along with the trimmer increasing here now of course the trimmer activity is slow slip event kind of like a slow slip earthquake in a way but not quite you know i don't like to use the term earthquake in trimmer uh, trimmer is where you get a slow vibrational um slippage between the plates and in this place it's the Juan de Fuca plate and the North American plate. The Juan de Fuca plate here subducting underneath the North American plate and it's been building up quite a bit of strain here since about 1700 since the last 9.0 earthquake struck so building up some steam but tremor activity uh, in relation to what's going on a little bit further upstream. Now tremor occurs about 45 kilometers down into the subduction zone underneath this area so just imagine if you will deeper area as you move right here on the screen the subduction zone does go pretty deep underneath there of course got plenty of volcanoes throughout the cascades uh, and uh, further left you go on the screen is uh, a little bit shallower right so that's why we're seeing some of that shallower earthquake activity upstream from the trimmer this one right here that 2.8 early this morning 31 kilometers deep a little bit further on the map but still a little bit further up uh, from the trimmer department uh, where that takes place. Either way, heightened activity across the um, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So just kind of watching that. Uh, throughout the Pacific Northwest, relatively minor conditions. A little small microquake activity out there today, it looks like. Texas, Oklahoma, well, about the same. Was just out there for a week. Enjoyed it. Uh, appreciate the hospitality out there in Texas. Some good folks. 
And it's a beautiful scenery, no doubt. I do love Texas, and I do love the weather out there. I'm, I'm a big fan of the, uh, of the thunderstorms and the humidity. I love it. Uh, 2.5, 1.4, and a 1.7 stirring up today in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Three earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Slight uptick, right? Definitely an uptick. Uh, over the last seven days or so, it's been relatively quiet. The last 30 days, you know, excluding today's events. Uh, last 30 days of all magnitudes shows about 25 earthquakes here in the New Madrid Seismic Zone. But the 2.5 we've seen this morning is the largest uh, so far in the last 30 days. But definitely uh, an uptick in this area as well. Uh, one earthquake way up in New York, a 2.0 near Redford, New York, from yesterday. Nothing going on overnight, it looks like. Puerto Rico Trench, very minimal activity for now. South America, about the same. The Atlantic Ocean stirring up slightly, as uh, far as the earthquake department goes. 4.8 earlier this morning, and the central mid-Atlantic Ridge, also up here in Iceland, a 4.5, about 1 o'clock this morning there. Looks like that's around the, uh, maybe a volcano i have to look into that a little bit later on. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Hawaii, quiet for now. Not a whole lot going on. A couple smaller volcanoes, or a couple smaller earthquakes. Hi, I need some I need some caffeine. Let me tell you, it's it was a fun night last night. I'll, I'll go into that here in just a little bit. Uh, a little bit of movement here across the Fiji area as well. Latest shows a 4.7, super deep. That is way down there, 653 kilometers deep. Those are some of the deeper ones that we see. We'll watch for subsequent shallower, larger activity across this region. Uh, EMSC is not loaded up here yet. Uh, apparently, they've been updated. This is the paid version. You can pay uh, to receive uh, a couple different options when you're using the Earthquake 3D program, and I, I just can't get it to go. It's not available as the EMSC goes and uh, it just wants to show the USGS. EMSC is still offline um, but I will keep checking back on that. Let me double check here make sure I'm just going to pull up the EMSC only. I thought maybe it's this thing right here this little date thingy but uh, that's not it. It's just not showing any earthquakes on here because there is no earthquakes to report from the EMSC because the RSS feeds are uh, still look like they're down. All right, um, so we'll, we'll definitely get into that uh, a little bit later. I'll see if I can figure out something else. Uh, there's an earthquake in the Sumatra area from this morning, that 5.1. As far as Japan goes, a little bit of activity uh, working its way around the Japan Trench, some of that deep, some shallow. The latest one, though, 3.9, fairly deep here. Well, not super deep, 39 kilometers here into the Japan Trench continue to watch that area of course Mediterranean region and the rest of the world fairly quiet uh, far as space weather activity goes let's see what we have a little bit of flaring from the departing sunspot still you can see it peaking out there around the northwestern limb look at this oh beautiful uh, feature right here that thing could blast off we'll look at that here in a second uh, but this one's still flaring 3354 it's not done yet. Uh, it, it grew very drastically and, and had a very complex sunspot structure over the past couple days, but it has been facing away from Earth here. This is an older image from the second. You can see how this is very complex, a lot of different colors, close range. And um, I believe that's the time it produced the X flare right around there. Um, what date was that X flare? Yeah, that was on the second, but it was a little bit. It looked like it was a little bit further on the uh, northwestern limb of the sun. Either way, this is old. The newer imagery from today shows that departing sunspot here still flaring, right? Still producing some flares. No longer a threat, though, far as any massive CME. If it were to blast off, we'll still feel the effects, obviously, from the flare uh, because that is well above uh, the area where the sunspot region is. That uh, activity does pick up quite a bit even when it's not specifically in view as far as the solar flare activity goes. So we're looking at a couple different sunspots that are facing the Earth currently that are growing in complexity. I see three of them at least. This one down here is our main region right now, I think, for some flaring, uh, strong flaring potentially. It's a very large sunspot, but individually got a separate strong core down here on the southern uh, edge of this. Also, uh, two other ones here in the northern hemisphere of the sun that look like they are growing as well. 
Uh, hopefully we'll get um, at least a nice CME from one of these in the coming days before they disappear off onto the uh, western limb of the sun like 3354 is doing. Uh, either way, I think uh, we still have a pretty good um, threat of some at least some moderate flares. 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 30, X flare around 5. We'll continue to watch a couple of these sunspots as they are growing in complexity with that um, with those sunspot regions there. All right, weather activity far as that goes today. Looks like a slight risk of severe weather up into the panhandle there. Oklahoma, Texas, Colorado, New Mexico, a little bit of Kansas as well. Uh, as far as the tornado potential goes, that's about a 2% chance. Main threat looks like it's going to be some hail. Uh, but nothing, uh, nothing severe, majorly severe set up today. Uh, low activity outside of Los Angeles, it looks like. Simi Valley, 1.3 coming in. Uh, and uh, into the uh, Santa Susana Mountains, about 18 kilometers deep. Uh, right now, I think the main threat for uh, earthquake activity, I got deeper movement over here into the Fiji area. Let's check out New Zealand here real quick. Let me see what's going on down here. It's hard to tell. Let's go, uh, I guess I can check them out here on the EMSC model here. I, I'm still not a big fan of their new setup. Uh, either way, this is the last um, hour of earthquake activity. You can see there in the circles, the uh, magnitudes, uh, looks like uh, Iceland, of course, having a little bit of activity. That's a 2.9. That looks big for a 2.9. Uh, you would expect that to be a 4, unless I'm clicking on the wrong one. It uh, looks a lot bigger than it should be. Those almost look like giant earthquakes happening. Uh, either way, let's go to the list here, uh, list of earthquakes. And uh, we'll see what we have from the EMSC model. And, I want to see if I can't add them back on somehow. Uh, if not, I'll use uh, maybe GeoNet servers and see. As uh, far as any major activity goes, looks like Iceland's having a pretty good swarm up there. Up there, uh, Currently, quite a few twos and threes coming in uh, to the area. Potentially a volcano. I, have, I haven't really looked into it uh, too much here. Let's go last 24 hours and see what we got going on here. Last 24 hours, definitely, uh, this is a broad area though, but more confined to the, uh, oh, what's that volcano's name? I can't remember the exact name of the volcano, but uh, they stirred up here last year. We'll check that out a little bit later. Either way, uh, some good earthquake swarming, it looks like there, into uh, the Iceland region. As uh, far as GeoNet servers go in New Zealand, Got a 3.3 about an hour ago. Most of that, uh, some light earthquake activity. Not seeing anything major going on here uh, across the map, uh, aside from that three pointer there about an hour or so ago. There we go. South, uh, looks like around the South Island area, but uh, goodness, I don't know. I don't know if that 3.3 would show up there like that. That's a little odd. A little odd. Interesting. All right. Um, it looks like some newer activity there. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard. To, well, there's a three-pointer. I'm talking about this earthquake activity down here. This has got to be an unnoticed. But either way, some earthquake activity down there in the South uh, Island area as well. Looks like about an hour or so ago. Um, maybe two hours ago. 2.4. There we go. Yeah, I guess it was about four hours ago. All right. Looked a little bit bigger on the earthquake drums and not than what they're reporting, but hey. All right. Uh, yeah, goodness. Um, I flew back in from Dallas to Sacramento last night, and um, I only bring on carry-ons. I don't want to go through the luggage claim and all that stuff, so I can fit pretty much everything I need. Uh, in my uh, carry-on, just got to stuff it in there, and um, I have a black one, and it's brand new, I just got it here a week or so ago, and well anyway, I had the window seat, one of the guys there around me grabbed my carry-on bag, I didn't notice because I was super tired, just drained, I actually fell asleep on the airplane, kind of first or, well, probably about the second time I've done that, I was pretty tired, and um so I got up to get my luggage 
my carry-on, I should say, and uh, it wasn't in the spot where I put it. It was kind of moved off to the side, so I was like, well, maybe someone moved it. So I grabbed, I gra grabbed what I thought was mine. It's identical, absolutely identical. I don't have any markings, distinct markings on mine. So I grabbed it, and as I was walking through the airplane, saying goodnight to everyone, uh, there in the um, terminal, I, I decided to double check, because that's where I keep my wallet, I keep my keys, everything in my terminal, or in the, um, the carry-on. So I look in there and there's just a whole bunch of um, religious literature. And I'm like, whoa, this is not mine. And so I start panicking. And Missy Mimi's was like, oh man, we got to find it. So I sent Missy Mimi's on her way to see if she can go track down people that were, you know, sitting around us uh, and to check down at the, um, the, um, the luggage area, you know, where you pick up your, uh, your check bags. And uh, sure enough, someone had my bat, my uh, my carry on, and didn't even know it. Didn't even check it. Just assumed that that was his. So luckily, she tracked him down. I was upstairs talking with the employees, mentioning what had happened, and they were trying to look into it as well, seeing what they could do. Either way, after all said and done, um, he got his bag, and I got my bag back. And it just it's scary. So now I'm going to slap a whole bunch of Earthmaster decals on my carry-on from now on. I, that's just the scariest thing ever because our keys were in there to drive home. These folks were headed to San Francisco. They said that they were uh, just about ready to leave San Francisco and they probably would have never found out until they got home. Uh, they're in San Francisco, so it would have been a mess there at the airport. I don't really like staying at the airport any longer than I have to. And I was super tired. All I wanted to do was get home and... Uh, Go to sleep. Either way, um, you know, we made it back in one piece. Live stream is up and running. It went down suspiciously here about an hour or so ago. Um, but we'll continue to watch that and, and investigate. Eventually, we'll figure out what's doing it. And when it does, I will definitely um, make an announcement on what's going on with it. Not going to hide anything. Whether it's an individual or an app, I will definitely make that announcement. Um, yeah, so have a good day, folks. I'm going to jump off here. I got a lot to do, a lot of catch up on here on the home front. So we'll catch you guys back here later tonight with an update, unless something major happens here. Have yourself a wonderful Wednesday, uh, Wednesday and uh, hopefully everyone out there uh, had a safe and happy 4th of July. Take care, folks.